I seriously woke up like this. Like, it's two, almost three o'clock. And I've done nothing with my hair. And I'm not going to. So today I wanted to talk a little bit in depth about eyeshadow brushes or eye eye brushes. I don't know what you call them. Look, I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to help a sister out or a mama out um, while we go through this journey together because, like I said, you're worth this little bit of time. So, there's a previous uh, uh, video that I did about, like, just the bare minimum of brushes that you might need, and uh, this is just something a little bit more in-depth about eyes. So, let's get right into it. So, the very first thing that you need is a big, fluffy brush. And I've got several different kinds. This is my biggest one. And I have another one. Yep. I have another one that's just like it, but it's a little bit smaller. It's just as fluffy, though. And then I have several other ones. I have this one. Um, that's a little fluffy. This one is a elf says flawless concealer brush do not think that this is for concealer because it's not this is a fluffy brush and it's what i use um and then this is my favorite one this is a koki um k-o-k-i-e and you find this in walmart and this is my favorite one because it's long and it like starts tight packed but it comes out fluffy so it makes it just stiff enough to be really really precise so fluffy brushes they're used for in the crease so you're gonna start um, I always start with a fluffy brush I usually start with my biggest one I usually have a very very neutral as close to my skin tone as possible uh, color on it and I just kind of like smooth out all the way up to the eyebrow so that's that um, second off I will go into something a little bit tighter like this one my favorite one because this is what I'll start in the crease only with like a transition. They call it a transition color. It's like usually a very neutral, not light neutral, like browns or um, the lightest color that you want on your actual lid. So all I do is I f start in the very corner. Your eye kind of makes the corner. So whenever someone's talking about a corner, they mean like, the very corner of your eyes, not the inner corner, the outer corner. So I literally like just put this on the outer corner and kind of fluff the uh, the color that I'm using, which is, well, like I said, the lightest color in towards my lid a little bit. And then I'll start going in at the very top of your eyelid, kind of like right where your socket starts. Okay. All eye shapes are different, obviously. So you put your transition color where you want it. You go have to find, uh, I am not an expert, so you'll have to find other um, videos that show you what shape of your transition or where you should do your, uh, what's it called? your crease, where you should start your crease. Because some people start their crease like way up here, like if you have hooded eyes or something. But I I have a pretty good eye crease, um, so I just stick right where it naturally is. So then you're gonna take your um, next darker color. I usually work with three different colors. Um, well, four, because I'll do the base that's super neutral, kind of like as close to my skin as possible. And then with in the crease will be uh, the lightest color that I'm putting on my eye. And then I go in with this one. Now, this one is a little bit tighter packed. It's a little bit stiffer. And if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, it tapers. So this one I use just on my outer uh, my corner, my outer corner, and I'll do the same thing. I'll start at the corner and I'll kind of flick in that little bit deeper color. And depending on my mood or if I'm looking for a specific eye color, which let's be honest, I know I get time for all that, 
sometimes it's just my mood. Um, I will go ahead and pack this into the crease as well. Well, not pack it, but I'll fluff it kind of into the crease. But when I'm using a darker color on this more stiff one, I will keep it lower. I won't go high. And then afterwards, you go back in with your transition color brush, no extra product on it, and you're just going to fluff it, kind of like blend um, those two colors together, or make sure there's not like a complete line from one color to another color, because you don't want that. You want your color to gradually, kind of like an ombre, gradually go up. So anyway, I will go back in with this and just fluff and Sometimes I'll take the transition kind of high, um, depending on what kind of dramatic look I'm looking for. But on most days, just a casual day, I keep it pretty much right in the crease. And then when I'm all done with my eye color, I'll go back in with this super fluffy one, my biggest brush, and um, uh, just kind of clean up the space between, I have a pretty big space between my eyelid my eyelid and my uh, actual eyebrows. So I try to kind of clean it up so it's really, really soft ombre from here to here. So then the next one um, that I'll go into is this one. And this one's a lot smaller and a lot more densely packed. See? So this is a little bit tighter. And this one I usually use for, like, if I'm just trying to... Uh, darken up my outer V just a little bit. Let me back up. After I do my kind of like fix my ombre, then I'll go in with a lid color. Now, you know, I use my fingers a lot um, for like, especially like my pots. Um, anything that you want that's shimmery and that you want to like, bam, um, you would definitely want to use your finger. When you use a shader brush, which is just a flat shader brush like this, this one's from Wet n Wild, uh, if you use a flat shader brush, it's going to kind of dilute the color a little bit. So um, after I do my ombre, then I'll take whatever color I'm working on and just put it on my lid. And then pretty much pack it on my lid with this or with this. Okay, so that was step number two, is the actual eyelid, and then I'll go in with this tightly packed one, and sometimes, uh, sometimes I'll even go back in with this crease again, or the second darkest um, color, this one, and kind of just redefine that it is darker on the outer edge and on inside the crease, but you don't want to take all the color away from what you just did on the lid. So sometimes sometimes it's a go back and forth process. If you ain't got time for that, the best thing I can tell you to do is smooth out, put in some kind of crease um, crease color, like a, a brown, like a light brown, and then just pack on one color. Quickly darken up your outer V again, and you're out the door. Mascara, psh gone. Super easy. Um, so anyway, this tightly packed one is like, usually sometimes I'll just even do like a black and I'll go boop in the black and very, very lightly just make a little V on the outside. So anyway, that's just kind of a rundown of um, your basic brush skills and what you may look for if you're trying to expand your makeup brushes. Uh, one more that I use, there's several different styles of these shader brushes. One more that I use, some of this one's stiff, and I like that that's my favorite, but like this Morphe one is a little bit um, fluffier, which is just going to dilute the color even more. It's going to like put it on your eye softer. But I also use this one. This is a Morphe one, and it's like super huge. It is a stiff shader brush, but this is when I'm using like a really light color on my shade. All mattes. I never put this in a shimmer. Um, and that's just because it's like super easy. I go one, two, like two swipes, and I've got plenty of nice lights like cream or um, a soft gold um, color, but always a matte. And so I'll use that one too. So anyway, 
there's a few options. I hope this helps you, and uh, if you have any other videos that you want me to expand a little bit more on, just for education purposes, let me know down below. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in my next video.